Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, so myself, Irshad Chauhan. This is our uh, part two of uh, our session based on Gen AI for Every Developers. So today uh, we are going to continue our discussion from the last time. Uh, that uh, last time we'll do a recap for 10 minutes of what we have co covered basically in more than one and a half hour. Uh, we would be try to shrink it up. Although there is a recording available, we can share that on chat later, which you can watch on YouTube uh, once you are done with this particular session. Our objective is if you're logging in from mobile, uh, please connect from your laptop, right? Uh, log in to a browser with internet along with maybe recording being done at, uh, at this side. Third point is uh, whatever we are trying, right? I would recommend that you should do it right away so that uh, at least part of it will get easily inculcated in your knowledge. And feel free to uh, provide your inputs over chat uh, or unmute yourself and talk if you need any other, uh, yeah, if you have any recommendation and guidance for others as well. With this, uh, let me start asking a simple question. How many of you are joining part two directly who were not part of the part one? Maybe you can put your message in chat. Uh, maybe yes, I was not present or something. Any one word in chat so that I'll know how much I need to get in depth for this. So, okay. Uh, so three people are there. Okay. Okay, most of it, it is uh, the first time, at least from the current joining list, at least half of it. Okay. So, uh, so our objective will not to cover what we have taught in the last time uh, that has already been documented, but whatever is needed for the continuation of today's discussion, that's something which we would be, uh, which I would be walking you through. So our, uh, let me start with an objective. Objective for uh, this session is generative AI for every developer. We know generative AI by different names. Maybe somebody call it chat GPT. For others, it is uh, a large learning, uh, large language models. For others, it could be foundation models or something. We are not here to teach how to build generative AI or how to develop on generative AI. Our objective here is how any developer or every developer can use Gen AI for their development work. When we say development, it is mostly related to the programming and the coding development, which we typically being part of. Okay. This was our agenda earlier. We'll talk slides wise. Yes. So what is generative AI? So generative AI in simple words, machine learning is where you have a simple input and simple output. Simple example is like weather prediction. A simple weather prediction example could be that I can take uh, dates and maybe locations. And I say, okay, okay, what was the temperature earlier on the same date? Maybe last 10 years of data on the same date, uh, what was let's say temperature on 11th of august in 2022 2023 2021 right and i'll get that pattern and based on that i can predict what would be the temperature in 2024 and 2025 so it's like very few inputs and few outputs that's that's typically covers under the machine learning part then the concept of deep learning comes where you have complex set of inputs and you you detect the simple output example could be image recognition right where you pass the whole image, which is like too much of a data, right? And from that, all the image, I am simply detecting whether there is a person in the image, whether I, I recognize a face in the image, or whether I count a number of people in the image and all those things, right? That's a machine learning image recognition is one example of that. Similarly, foundation model is where you have a complex input, but also as a complex output, right? So example is I would, uh, typically gives the whole text as an input and I get a uh, full uh, full blown text out of it as an output. You pass a PDF uh, textbook and you want to get a summarize, uh, summarization out of it. You pass a summarized text uh, to it and it can generate a question and answer based on that. Or it, if you pass a question, it tries to analyze and tries to gives you an answer for that particular question. All right, so that's where the foundation model lies. There are other types of model as well, where you can pass image as an input, get image and output. You might have heard about GPT Sora, which takes here, yeah, which even generates video as an output. But we would be mostly today 
uh, talk only on the text based uh, models where you pass input as a text and you typically get output also in the form of text okay uh, there of course there is an uh, developers are being impacted so that's why we are here right and how to basically prepare for simple idea is generative ai will not be replacing developers unless you learn about it right if you can hire gen ai as as your assistant then it is better okay what are the different options you can go to chat gpt that's the first link but there are other options available which many a time performs much better than the typical options available in the chat gpt i'm mostly talking about the free options here but there are paid options available at your company as well so another is cloud.ai meta.ai perplexity.ai which is an ai based search engine uh ide let's say whatever you are using vs code or uh, any other tool which you are used for development you can simply integrate plugins there for github copilot or amazon q for developers if you don't want anything to connect to internet there is a software called as olama which you can install of course your machine should be at least 16 gb with an integrated graphic cards to make it work and then there are models which you can deploy so there are like if you spend maybe just 15 minutes on this you will be able to uh, get these things running on your laptop okay so uh, we started this uh, but i will skip this uh, so this was like one of the workshop which we did last time that you get a program as an where you want to analyze a large csv file and how to basically generate a code for it right yes generative ai uh, you might have tried how many of you have not tried generative ai till now may be uh, especially for development how many of you have not used gen ai for development maybe you can simply put that in a message okay google farm has not tried it okay so uh, uh, one of the thing is that uh, gen ai typically it gives you good output for most of the cases but many a time it actually uh, also gives you an hallucination so what what do what we mean by hallucination is it's a confident liar when you ask something it will always tell you whether it uh, I, i would say i won't say whether it knows it or not it will tell you whatever comes to its mind right so it does not really reevaluate that when you actually tells it right that's the biggest problem of uh, gen ai that it would always tries to gives you an answer and that's what you need to basically make a way around to validate whether it is whatever output it is giving it is right or wrong many time if you ask it to generate an output it can generate an uh, maybe an imaginative library for java which is not even present or its library is present but that method name is not present or method is present but parameters are not correct right or a version which it uh, detects typically anything related to numbers hallucination goes at least uh, to 20% whereas for text it is at least 90% correct 90 95% but especially for numbers things goes uh, really easily go haywire right if uh, so that means developers is still needed right but how to utilize it that's what we are going to talk about this is very critical uh, this is the crux of how you talk as a human to human communication we also need to improve ourselves in terms of confident how you present yourself how to summarize your thought this becomes more critical when you talk uh, talk to a uh, basically an llm model or basically generate ai okay so uh, there are different ways of how you typically talk uh, in terms of uh, uh, basically getting your answer back simple style is there are three things number one is a simple prompt prompt is nothing but what you tell or what you ask from the gen ai model maybe you simply say write a function which will sort uh, numbers in an array right and it would whatever so what happens is it will imaginatively creates its own array based on its own type whether it is 5 or 10 it does not ask you back right it simply assume rest of the things which is missing right so if you want it to get better to your answer the objective is that you should be providing all the context needed for it so you say ki whether it is an array of string or a number or a float how big this array can be right what uh, will there be any null value in it what you are optimizing it for speed 
performance or memory utilization right more information you provide more better it can answer you back that is called context so simple information whatever uh, command you want to do it let's say write a program for sorting but then you pass all these information as a context you can pass dynamically also this data maybe understanding what is already present at your end right so you can pass that as well and then there are different techniques to it so these are some of the techniques of prompt engineering so imagine that uh, that if you're talking to a kid right uh, this is one example which i was telling earlier as well that what is chain of thought chain of thought is you don't tell the end result directly you start with small things you simply so say how would you sort two class, uh, let's say two numbers uh, write a program for that so it writes a program of simply checking two numbers then you say ki now instead of uh, two variables it could be an array right and then you say ki it array could be of a string right and then a, a string array uh, can be of a particular class right so you increase the complexity step by step that's how you typically teach a children as well right? so that way you can break down your task in your mind or on your paper and then you pass one by one through these thoughts right so that's typically goes with uh, uh, that is typically goes with chain of thought prompt chaining actually so you pass one prompt and then uh, gets the answer that's the uh, sorry that's the if you do it at multiple step that's called prompt chaining right and if you give a thought process that this is how you should think about it and that typically comes as part of the chain of thought right if you have certain example set with you and you pass that that is called few shot so zero shot means you don't have, you are not passing any examples but if you have one two three or many examples you say one shot two shot few shots uh, that's the techniques this is very ne much needed in terms of data science project or if you are generating unit test cases or integration test cases if you are generating data from it for your test cases that's where few shot and zero shot really helps right context if you Uh, let's say in your program you may you can use spring boot x library or versus y library but you if you mention that properly that this is what i want this method to be used and this method does this that's the context information which you pass critical part is that uh, do work out with your uh, internal company policy of using any of these public or private genai services because once you pass this data many a times this data have uh, is your ip and this ip gets leaked into this model and within 6 months your data would be publicly available with this genai model can be consumed by any other resources there has been lot of uh, challenges happened in this area as well so please make sure that you are abiding to your company policy uh, be better writer do spoon feeding a lot to these models remove all words which are not specific let's say please Uh, do this for me can you do this for me instead of can you do this for me directly say do this that's it right be as specific as possible break down task if it is not able to understand and pass one by one and then iterate on top of it right? last time we talk about uh, how you need to think about generating a program and uh, i'll touch base on that and then i'll come to this slide quickly so this is how a thought process should be right uh whenever you are building a whole module from the generative ai there so this is what a typical conversation comes that you can generate a particular method or a function it, it does a pretty good job maybe poc or a pilot code it does a pretty good job and i have used it in past for those kind of examples as well but how to use it like utilize it for a production grade application so the idea behind that is divide and conquer or divide and rule right so first of all what are things which you are going to do De design that i up in advance let's say for example that could be your framework if you are saying something in java but whether it would be on spring boot or something else as a library you can define that up front or you can get a recommendation from genai if you want let's say i want to design it in python what are my av available option for generating an api whether it would be flask whether it would be django whether it would be something else right so that options you can evaluate and then pick those options so that's where you can design your framework what pattern you are going to use uh, let's say mvvp pattern or mvvm pattern so that whatever classes functions i a structure that something comes to your mind once you have your class and functional definition ready then you can get help in terms of that how you can actually 
generate an overall prototype on the that okay which class what are the method it needs and what each method what it is going to do right think about generating just the interface first right so it starts with that once you are done with this then you go for each function and then for each function first design the prototype right or basically a flow diagram only okay so you you simply ask for a flow diagram let me show you some example what we did last time So for example, simple pseudo code we generated first, okay, how you are going to do about it, right? And then I asked, okay, give me in full details what each function is going to do. So first you work, don't work directly on code, direct, work first on updating or finding or tuning your pseudo code. Once you're done with your pseudo code for any function, then you simply then ask for, okay, now this is my pseudo code, codify it, right? Simple prompt chaining, right? But first iterate your uh, fine tune method in terms of logical uh, finish of the function. Okay. Once you've done that for each function, you codify it, then you do unit testing, or sorry, then you do basically whatever additional things you wanted to add on top of it. Let's say adding certain constraint, okay, these variable will be coming from the global variable, these variable will be coming from a cache, or uh, if a object is already present in cache, then return from it, those conditional checks, exception handling, logging, that you add on top of it. So you pass the original code which has been generated and working fine. He add in this exception handling or add in this a logic of cache management that if object is present in cache, then return from cache, otherwise hit the DTO layer. So that's what you can mention it next. Don't try to do everything at once and it becomes complicated and then either hallucination is a problem or you don't get a right results. So this iterates for each function and that's why you can generate the whole code. With this, uh, we'll start uh, with today's code. Tips of for improving is a long breakdown. I would suggest uh, how you can think about it. Explain your code, objective what each function does. Ask how, what would be the flow of method, right? Uh, which we discussed in the just uh, right now. Then break down each of this problem and only return function name and what they are going to do generate code for each function, breaking it down further. And then if output of a function is not good, it starts simple and then improvise by adding condition, exception handling and all. And then there is a concept called as critique model in which once you generate it, ask it back again to maybe the same model or other model and get the feedback to improve. If you are asking for any feedback to improve, mention what you are looking for an improvement. So there are different criteria from technology, from functional part let's say uh, improve it in terms of uh, number of parameters or improve it in numbers of performance or improve it number of uh, reliability part and all those things so you can pass those things so that it can improve on that right and then iterate on top of it so this is what we have covered in, uh, in last time okay and that's what the objective for till now any questions now uh, then we'll start from uh, from here Uh, yeah, I, I can turn my video on, but uh, I would be looking at separate screen, so may not be always facing on the camera. Any other questions? Uh, any doubts, queries till now? Uh, I had one question. So uh, I, I had experienced uh, the same thing, what you just said. <clears throat> it gives out some functions that are not there and uh, yeah, some kind of hallucinations. So mm -hmm. reiteration is the only process there wherein we can uh, give a glimpse of what the code does and uh, uh, what is the way? So the feedback part we can take from Gen AI and the rest part we have to do it by ourselves. So is it the way? Yeah, so either you pass it in advance as part of your context itself. Okay, uh, maybe you would say, okay, okay, this is the library name I'm going to use, right? And uh, these are the method and I'm working on X version, right? So it would be only picking from that. And it specifically mentioned that, give me answer uh, from that library itself. And uh, sometimes it happens that it does not able to give you a proper library. Then typically the another thing what we do, we ask for what this library or a function does right? and what are the alternative functions available for it. That way it can give you some other options as well. 
third sometimes it does not many a time returns you the correct version but typically that functionality is there right maybe it's like a, a legacy functionality uh, the upgraded version actually uh, version has a simple deprecated that function so in th those particular cases uh, the challenge comes that uh, you need to basically add that additionally okay hope that answers the question and, and adding on just one more question like uh, with respect to the policy constraints of the company we are not supposed to uh, and they have blocked the chat gpt and all of this stuff so they have given some internal uh, ai uh, modulus so, uh, model so that doesn't give out that quality of code so uh, in that case like since we can't copy the code how we can provide inputs so that we can get better output correct so uh, see objective is your ip is your ip right so it's better than you work only at uh, algorithm level don't copy but only ask for let's say some iteration hint level from cloud or from the other solutions and then pass it back to your internal llm to design on top of it so many a time uh, if you break down your task right and even that breaking down you can get help from llm first so don't directly jump on to the solving the code directly if you go by uh, let's say logical steps by steps right it can gives you better answer that can work on your internal tool here directly but if you want to pass that outside don't pass your code but let's say uh, instead of passing the code you say okay i want x function to be driven from it so copy in is many a time allowed right unless you are building your own ip where you don't want any of the traces of llm uh, then it could be a challenge but i think 90% of the time copy in is allowed copy out is something is the challenge so hope that answers your question yeah, exactly okay so we work on developing a module now right so next step is uh, next step is basically working on unit testing uh, so this is uh, this is actually very good uh, practice if you are working with gen ai how many of you we asked we asked this question last time as well that how many of you have worked on tdd or no tdd tdd or bdd anyone uh, can put the full form in the chat is it technical design document uh, it could be but not in this particular context it's a driven development dd means yeah. okay uh, test driven development correct so uh, there is a concept called test driven development or the another concept is called behavior driven development uh, this was kind of a uh, already a methodology of how one should develop some of the large uh, especially core tech companies uh, follow this by rule that it, there should always be 100% code coverages of your uh, code what you are going to write so test driven development in simple mean is before you start writing the code if you write all the test cases uh, what this code should do or what this function should do so unit testing is the where you test one function by function okay so if i am having one function and that function you want to test it let's say you are writing a sorting case so whatever possible yeah, combination sorry whatever possible combination of uh, can you guys mute yourself and if you are uh, we will give you a slot when you want to do a uh, when we will ask you for a question otherwise you can put you put your question in chat and i'll handle it so uh, so basically i was talking about unit testing so unit testing is where you uh, basically pick one particular function and write test cases for it in a codified manner codified means you would be writing in the same coding language right so uh, if you are writing a simple function which will be let's say storing data in database right so you would be simply checking whether it is storing properly or not whether it is checking for all the constraints or not right whether it is returning the right uh, uh, results back or not whether it is throwing right exceptions or not so once you have all these four five different test cases in mind you write that test cases first and once you have written the test cases then if you simply maybe write the code and simply run all the test cases that means if all the test cases are working whatever code it has been generated it is doing doing the job right so if you are working with gen ai concept right so this is what is very common practice that whatever code especially especially where you are writing an algorithms which has a lot of conditions and loop 
in those cases it's better to start with writing the unit test case first and again you can write if you simply pass ki what this function supposed to do and what are the things it needed to test it for you can generate the unit test case the benefit or beauty here is unit test case does not really requires too much of a logical uh, explanation or knowledge of x library versus y it only needs to know the input and it will validate against the output of that method by while mocking some of the input parameter right so that's the concept so that way writing test cases becomes much easier for any llms and especially for even company provided llm even if it is not let's say quite good once you write these unit test cases then you are pretty sure that you can actually do iteration quite faster so many a time let's say hypothetically you get a uh, hallucinated code generated or you wrote something which is breaking right unit test case becomes an easiest way to test it out function by function you simply run let's say those 8 10 different test cases and if all of them passes then that means you have wrote, written things properly right now number one thing what you can get, get help with if you have already written certain test cases you pass it on and say okay, okay can you review this for me and pass it against the your uh, actual code that's one way of doing it second you have a code already written and ask it to generate an automated test cases for that right especially if you are passing the data many times data generation is is the challenge that's where you would be using few short you generate one or two examples of data line and based on that you ask it to generate the other data sets whatever is needed let's say you want to generate a really simple 10 line excel a 10 line csv for testing your data science project okay or maybe a json response uh, for your method so you can simply do that automatically uh, if you don't know uh, how to write unit test cases for a let's say now i'm very new to python but uh, i want to learn what libraries to use uh, how to write test cases in it and then how to generate test cases for my code and then even how to run it step by step if i'll ask it i will be able to get those pointers as well right it can generate fake data or mock data fake data may not be the right word mock data for your test cases right it can even help you write the integration test cases integration test cases is where you test the whole module at once right it typically does not mock uh, the internal functions but it mocks the external out, uh, external integration point right so if you are testing just the service module of a thing right you can mock the data database and mock the api layer where you are not actually having a browser to call it and it can mock, it still runs the multiple functions together uh, integration test case many times requires the logical uh, 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 cases so if you have written your test cases you can pass the test cases and let it generate the test case for you code of code for you right uh, you can go with iteration phases that You, if it hallucinate on one or the other thing you can pass you, okay this is the method which does this function or this method does this function and based on that you can take it up okay uh, this is where the code to interface practice also helps a lot because code to interface helps you simply get the method name and let's say one liner comment on top of it what this function does and if you pass that to this integration test suite it becomes an easy context for your model for a genai model to understand how it should think about a particular function what should be the input parameters so okay. and again it also helps you uh, a simple uh, api or a scripts even to run it integration test case can also get uh, basically codified as part of your uh, build pipeline or integration pipeline or automated deployment or ci cd whatever name you uh, you know this about you can basically get even in the scripts let's say to run it on jenkins run it on gitlab run or run it on github run or run it on x or y okay now again the tip here is go one by one go one function by function right if you think it, uh, coverage is not get uh, going uh, ahead then you ask for special cases function for each of those method right many time if you generate lot of functions you can generate all the, uh, duplicates that you can simply delete whatever things are duplicate okay or improve using prompt chaining uh, develop one method and using that now uh, add a one more complementary unit function which check for x condition now check for y condition now check for z condition this way you can break it down okay so more uh, what i could say more uh, better you pass the prompts more better you get the answer 
think about it that this is a six months to one year experience a developer of on any language which is helping you but you are is tech lead or a mentor okay how would you pass those comments to the person although persons humans are more intelligent they take a lot of things from cues and context right where here you need to explicitly mention all those contexts that's the only challenge so if you pass that uh, eventually you would get an answer back okay so this is for the unit uh, testing generation now you can also take help in terms of documentation many a time these are the two things which most of our code especially legacy code are not uh, basically cleared with what we do we either write a code but we don't know uh, what this code does once after one year or after two years written by someone else i don't know one thing you can ask genai to explain that code to you right that explanation of that code or each function can go into automatically in a readme file right it can you can actually create a function uh, basically even you can create that kind of an automated way that whenever you commit it will write description of each of those function in a separate documentation which is available right that's a very good practice which you can simply oblige to and then you can make tweaks if there is anything needs to be done on those projects right it can also understand what a particular module does but again it's better that if you have a summarized context from me right if you pass the whole module and say okay, okay tell me what this module do it would do a pretty bad job in that right so it's better if you have a code to interface fashion and you have written what each function do in a smaller manner maybe through a genai itself and then you use that data to generate your overall module definition you would be able to do that right so this is another uh, good practice in that case adding an input and an output in most of the classes you can do that right uh, asking genai to help you what are the module which uses lot of uh, cognitive complexity there is a term called cognitive complexity in development world uh, if anyone has used sonar cube they would know this term of anyone knows what is cognitive complexity or wants to try unmute yourself and maybe simply talk about it anyone try it okay uh, if not then cognitive complexity means that if a function has lot of conditions and loop and lot of logic right it actually creates a lot of uh, cognitive means brain overload for me or cognitive overhead what we call it, right typically we say every function should break down if it is let's say have a lot of conditions or lot of loops in it into a more consumable bite size methods right so typically you define cognitive complexity as 13 or a 8 not throughout but at least to your major part where you want to have a better explanation so sonar cube is one of such tool not the genai it's already there for last maybe 20 at least 15 years that what it does basically it check simple rule based code and check how many conditions and loops and count that and if any method gets more than 8 8 logic check or uh, logic plus loop or condition check it create that as a 8 function if you are using ternary operator it gives you that and all okay so what uh, what it happens that if it goes more than 8 then it's like a bit complex method to understand of course if it is needed keep it right uh, but uh, for that especially you can say okay, okay module which are you know, having more than uh, cognitive complexity of 8 uh, and above or functions generate a automated documentation about each line because rest where you don't need it but at least wherever you have lot of and 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 in a single condition maybe put a documentation there right or what are the areas to look watch out for so all those things uh, maybe simply adding a comments what i'm saying is whenever we simply look for generation of a code we typically think only generation of the code but there is also a better stage that you document this as you develop right so these are the small practice which helps you generate a code which can be read in after 3 years without going through let's a a document file available at your manager right so it's better that if something is a complex a variable then you define there itself one example of it so you simply say while you're writing the code okay, okay also generate an example of input parameter as part of it so that that's already there so if anyone wants to try that example they will be able to do it. don't do that 
that is why again many company believes that best documentation is the unit test case so that means i only rely on unit test case so if anything existing is working as is and it is covered by unit test case 100% in that case if i if i change something i either first to start changing the unit test case and then test it or if i change something and they broke one of my unit test case that means i did something which is not supposed to be right so that's a good practice if you are looking in that direction as well again same methodologies documentation also breakdown for function level breakdown for cognitive complexity then pass that summarized information to your module level and that information you can pass it back to your overall readme as a reference link okay so that's how you can pass it now other tips and tricks which is not directly related to the uh, development and the documentation there are various file format here i'm just giving one example uh, which are in text when you say text it is xml right so svg is a image generation file format and uh, it does actually pretty good job uh, you didn't know if you need to let's say look for an icon which you want to place in your website right you would be searching for it there could be certain x or y things related to what you can do you can simply ask llm to even generate an icon for your website i can when i say normal those tool tips icon uh, uh, add button submit and all these icons mic icons and all those kind if you tries to make it generate a logo in svg it may do a pretty bad job in most of the time but at least for your iconography part which can be gen done by svg it's it does a good job right passing special prompts for it gives you a better answer so i i was doing this last time but i was doing it i think on cloud okay ha huh. so for example uh, i asked it to okay, generate a logo for my app be real with a social media app focusing on life it gives you this kind of an output right and you know tries to explain it that as well then i'd say keep i wanted more depth from chaining i want uh, make it in 3d with green circle keep it small so but yeah for a logo it does uh, it does not do a pretty good job in that sense but it actually helps you generate the good uh, a uh, good objective in terms of how your svg can be generated from it right so this is a good one to start second is xml for android screen if you want to generate your own ui and even html in that case right html is also kind of a different uh, format altogether so if you want to generate your xml or html and if you pass this is this the library what i'm going to use and these are the things which i want you to make, make it happen or you can get a generation out of it some of the model if it is a paid one it takes an input as an image as well okay so but if you use image as well as and text combined together as an input right especially let's say cloud.ai here i don't think so, it takes so for example in cloud i can actually put up an image of an screen right and let's say i pick one screen here as an example and i also write ki okay generate x android xml screen for this or generate an html for this it will be able it will it tries to generate that okay uh, in case of html i would suggest it starts by small small component so that it can understand that and then generates you the uh, screens for that or generating a css for a particular screen so that's a good one to start with okay so that's the uh, for the xml part and or the any other text based media format so if you have any if maybe if you have a transcript in a simple format you want to generate it into a subtitle format with a time uh, time based breakdown you ask it and it will try to uh, convert that one file to the another file if you have a json format code json format data structure you want to make it into csv it will be able to do that okay so this is another tips which i wanted to uh, share that for your test cases and for your documentation which you can use for your development okay before jumping on to devops any questions from anyone for unit test cases documentation additional developments adding a one question yes please this breaking down the task into multiple task and asking to the chat gpt to generate the code so let's say if i create one function mm -hmm. the chat gpt might have created 
the code with some specific variables. Correct. And if I create another mm -hmm. uh, function, mm -hmm. so it might create some, it will use another variables. Correct. So correlating those references again, that will create another problem. Correct, correct, correct. A very fair point, uh, I think, what you have raised. Uh, that is why uh, see, uh, there are two things. Now, going for the LLM uh, part, there are three things basically. Uh, uh, temperature and P and all these things are there. One is called context window. Okay. In simple word, in simple word, uh, one LLM is limited that how much data you can pass, right? So even if you so that is why if you uh, let's say if somebody says okay, okay this particular LLM model has a uh, model window of hundred k it opens, right? That means it can take up to seventy. Uh, Seventy thousand words into it. Okay, so yeah, uh, so you can even pass the whole program of yours, and then you say, okay, okay add a function in this, right? So that way you can get a better results, especially in this case. Or if you know that these are the variable at global level which you should use, and these are the variable which is being passed by another function, you can pass that as a context. But you need to pass that information to the model to know about it. That okay, these are the three variable available. At, these are the three global variable which you can use for x reason, y reason, and z reason. This is the uh, this is my method which has already uh, written, and I want you to return updated version using those above variable. So that way you can get your updates, and that is what this integration in the IDE gives you. So if you ask any question, let's say uh, to Copilot or Amazon Q, I can simply ask a question. Okay, okay this is let's say my parse file, right? Uh, I've made, let's say, this is in a three-step function center. So it would try to understand that what the file open, and based on that, it tries to generate automatically. OK? So that means these IDE integration consider that whatever has been opened here as a file, uh, if it is free version, that simply take the open file. But if it is paid version, it also takes the folder structure and other line names, function definition into the memory and you pass it. So eventually, if you understand internally, more you need to pass that information to your system. Okay, this is my folder structure. These are the four class and these four class have this, this function. This function does this, does this, does this. And then you say, okay, okay, this is my new class in which this one method I want to generate. So it, of course, it takes a, because for human, it becomes a, common practice that we know this code slowly, slowly in our uh, memory itself. And that's how we, we write the code overall. Same thing, but for these LLM model, these are like a stateless. So you need to mention that these are already in the context, or this has already been done, or this is something which I want you to work on. That is why integration is something is becomes easy. Uh, integration for you becomes, uh, sorry, integrating such things becomes uh, critical for developers to, uh, to integrate. So it is, yes, it's a common challenge that if you simply ask, okay, generate one method for searching and one method for sorting, but it has to be done for both on the same array of classes, then one can generate X or other can generate Y. So either you pass uh, additionally context if you're working with chat GPT, or if you are working with an integrated within the ID that something is being done by the job. But here also, for example, it does not take uh, into account rest of the open file. Also, you can pass that as an example, but typically that what it does. So hope that answered your question. So in simple word, you need to pass that information in the context as the whole file or as a special function. Hope that answered the question. Yeah. And to start with the uh, generative AI, we need the LLM. So is there any specific place where I can get the LLMs to do the practice and those all okay so i think uh, i think you said chat gpt is also internally uses their own llm which is gpt4 or chat gpt 3.5 this is just the ui of it right so you can practice things here another is claude.ai which is by a company called as anthropic uh, many a times this returns a very good results and i think last time we discussed on this itself for one of the use cases that uh, which we are doing for par parsing of a resume with Claude.ai. So uh, this is another one which is free, but have a rate limiting, but gives you better results than ChatGPT. 
Apart from that, there are various other websites like Meta.ai is the third one. Okay. If you go to this website, login, you will get a its own model available for your coding part as well. Then apart from this, there is also you know, this integrated within the Visual Studio Code like Amazon Q or uh, another is GitHub Copilot. You can add those plugins, but that plugins automatically reads your code. So make sure that it is being subscribed by your company or you do it for your own personal learning on your own personal laptop. Okay. Uh, apart from that, there is uh, other sites like perplexity.ai and others, which also gives you some simple serving results. So these are the sites from where you can learn about this. If you want to do it locally, this is the software uh, at top, you would be seeing Quit Olama. Olama is the name of the software. Olama allows you to run small language models on your laptop. Maybe if your laptop is good enough, you can run 7 billion parameters model on your local. Okay. 7 billion, uh, if it is fine tuned for coding, it, it does a pretty good job compared to chat GPT. Okay. But if it is uh, not fine tuned for code, it would do a pretty bad job in terms of writing code. Okay. So, but benefit here is uh, with the local running model that you can take a simple uh, different models, which are especially fine tuned for code. Right? So there are a lot of code related model. Uh, code Llama is there, Code Gamma is something which is very famous. Code Astral is there, Code Astral, Code Llama and uh, see there are a lot of available. Uh, one more actually I just forgot the name. Let me see. Code Astral, Code Gamma, uh, Code Llama. These are the three which I typically know or try between one or the other. Deep Sea Coder, this is very good actually. So, uh, so for example, if you try to run Deep Sea, yeah, I think there is a Deep Sea uh, Coder 2 as well which came. And if you go to their GitHub repository, you will be finding their benchmark and everything basically on that. So for example, this is their coverage with respect to the others. Code Gamma, Code Lama, 13 billion, 7 million. Uh, Deep Sea Coder, 33 billion model. If something covers, let's say, this level of code coverage for every other language. That, right? And this is what it covers with the other language. In GPT-4 is 84%. Deep Seeker Coder base, 33 billion is this. Which is like, GPT-4 is like more than 200 billion parameter. Whereas Deep Seek Coder is just 33 billion parameter like one eighth of the size you are able to run it. So if your company, especially startup, if they want to do it, they can pick some fine tuned model, especially for one or two languages. And then you try to do it. It gives you very good results. For example, deep sea coder instruct, uh, for this 7 billion model, it gives you 78% work done, which is compared to GPT 3.5 turbo. So without paying anything, you can run this 7 billion on a simple 16 GB machine and you are good to go. Right. So it can generate a good Python code or some other code based on what you're writing. Okay. So this becomes a good uh, mechanism, but yeah, you need to have a code and instruct model. Instruct is like more fine tuned for instruct instruction taking. This is like foundation model. These are typical terms uh, going deep into the foundation model. Okay. Not to worry, but for you guys, simply API based services, it starts with that for your learning. For entrepreneurs here, if they want to build, I would suggest if you are building on IP things, if you're simply building SI service job, you can go with the uh, open source, basically any API based services. But if you are building algorithms or if you are having copyrighted solutions internally, I would suggest to don't code it on uh, uh, any public facing APIs, uh, running it locally or running, let's say uh, running it on Amazon Bedrock or something which gives you a guardrail that your data will not get shared with the uh, actual LLM provider. Okay. That helps you protect your IP. Hope that answers the question. Any last question? Otherwise we'll move. My last question. Is there any place where I can learn this, uh, to giving the prompts to the, uh, this uh, AI. So how to give this, uh, means is there a template where I can give the, commands to AI in a specific format so that I can get complete information out of it. Okay. 
means so, just, just to add on to this question uh, as in companies like uh, mnc companies we get access to coursera and all of the stuff so uh, i see the prompt engineering and all those courses so would it be really helpful for the developers to uh, pursue those courses and go ahead like the actual curated courses is there any suggestions for that i i think a uh, very good point and i think you have answered already part to it so that's called uh, prompt engineering and yes it would help developers and even non developers because this is something can be used by anyone else so uh, the, uh, the uh, so for example the, it talks about different te techniques basic zero shot few shot which you talked about it only thing is it talks about in a general way right for anyone to learn about it but then how to apply it in coding field that's what the objective of this session was so that's what we covered actually uh, at least at some depth uh, in la in our last session but i would recommend to watch that and also go through this prompting guide.ai and yes any other courses whatever can explain you better becomes a, a good so chain of thought self consistency prompt chaining these are the common ones and then there are other tools and techniques which actually it uses so that is also so yes uh, to answer your question uh, you need to learn about prompt engineering right as a developer and even as a manager or basically any job whatever you are doing you should learn in this as an additional skills for your career second uh, learn to apply this same knowledge in your domain right because this would be a generic one how you can copy this knowledge and inherent and up solve another problem in your domain right that's uh, that's something which you need to know and that's i think if uh, last time i've shared a video over bloom taxonomy uh, so that's like level 3 and level 4 being expected from human so so that's a level 3 thinking so learn from prompting prompting guide.ai learn from coursera or any other courses available and uh, more is practice once you practice you will understand tuning and tweaking what works in each scenario uh, and how you need to work up, of course so whenever you are watching any videos or been prompt guiding at site think about an example and try to apply that knowledge then and there or at least on the same day so that you would be able to do that okay thank you so thank you uh, so we'll move forward to the next segment we'll take another pause maybe later for the questions now uh, so we talked about developers we talked about testers we talked about uh, documentations as a tech lead uh, what about devops right uh, this becomes a very crucial thing that how you can actually help uh, deploy so from there we'll start so you know, with a simple workshop as well that once you write a code there are various ways to deploy it and as a devops engineer and as a expert of your uh, field within the computer engineering be it as a automation engineer devops engineer developer or an architect uh, we uh, there is always a context information needed from you or expected from you if you are asking a devops to help right same example let's pick this up okay, let's say we build this code in python last time so we say okay okay uh, so i'll for others we write a program which reads a resume and parse information from it basically if i pass any pdf file it should be able to try to extract name mobile number location year of experience current organization and current role so it uses a library it it is telling by itself that i'm using a py pdf library and wrote this one function which takes name as an input and it is using regular expression with different logic to extract that information right i say ki okay don't use this i want you to use an ocr library available which is amazon textrack and then it changes the code and use boto3 library pull the code get the pdf mark it get the information and then able to extract this information okay and that's how it can do it now let's say our third is instead of using let's say textrack now even you can use llm to extract information from the resume so again uh i let's say uh, this is what i am asking ki, okay if you can write a resume right let's say this is my whole resume something like this as a one sample and then it would try to extract for me so this is where few short prompting goes right so i am saying ki, okay this is one resume there could be multiple such resume and uh, this resume have this information this information this information if you have four or five such examples right 
and based on that you can actually generate okay, okay now based on this information can you generate y right that's what you can do it here so with three short prompting means three example and three i think you will be able to get this uh, use case done with 80% accuracy very easy okay let's say we develop this now my objective is to deploy it right so first of all this is a python code so maybe i'll start it okay let's say i don't know how to deploy it on cloud so it says okay, on aws how can i deploy it and on other function how can i deploy it and uh, then it also tells me steps to do it see i have not passed much of the context that's why it tries to even generate this let's say so for example i'll take something which i have not done in the past maybe i'll take uh, heroku or a, a digital ocean which i have not done okay so i'll take heroku okay So let's say additional context may I say okay. Okay, so I passed this key, no credentials should be there in the same script if I'm connecting to Python. So that that clarity is already there. So it generates the file, how to how it generates, right? And then also tells me in a script, so how to basically move this file onto that machine, write that script and gives me a separate environment uh, variable, which I say, okay, okay, this is what I can pass. And it gives me those steps as well, right? So that's how you can do it. Okay, uh, many a time if I ask same question on the same thread, typically these AI tool, what it does, whatever I whatever the discussion we had till now, it will pass again as an input and sometimes it bias my results in a single way. So I always prefer if I want something to be start from scratch, I would do this separately. Okay, So maybe I'll simply copy the prompt from the earlier one so that it won't have anything else. Uh, one prompt starts a new chat. I simply say, okay, okay. Uh, write a program to read it in this. It assumed it is in Python and it generates a code for me. Okay. So this is what it does. Now help me deploy this on AWS Lambda function. Don't store credit. So what I don't want, I, I'm mentioning that as well. So I pass this as a context and then it, it tell me that how I'm going to do it. So what it does basically same code which has been generated is now being uh, moved in a Lambda handler on AWS if you deploy. Right. So it uh, take those credentials from the uh, credential.json, which is being opened by the Lambda, and then it actually tries to generate it. Right. See, one thing, uh, and then it gives me all these steps what I need to do. So it says pip install I need to do, credential I need to pass in a file, uh, Lambda would, would be this, this is what it is, this is the function, this is the Lambda and permission which I need to do. Okay, and this is the command which I need to basically run for triggering that uh, function, that whenever there is a PDF file in this bucket, it will be running that. 
see i have not told it to do all these things at once uh, so problem is this it takes uh, rest of the things by its own assumption and that's what our frustration typically built up that's why if you're working with uh, basically these models it's better to pass those context in advance you need to also restrict them what exactly you need as an output many time it does a lot of things i don't worry about let's say this python code or python code uh, to be done and that's this or that my objective is to pass maybe my objective is let's say this ki how i should deploy from my laptop to aws cloud so then it would be basically basically tweaking in that above and then it would be telling me on those additional things whatever is needed ki okay this is a script function name region uh, this thing and a single command to deploy it and that's what i need to do configuring the credential i would be using this and then there is this script right so it tell you those steps as well and if i don't know what does this mean so i can also say ki okay it tells me about this as well right so pre hook what is pre hook what is pre push what are the other things which you have, which i can do it can tell you okay so that way you can actually have your uh, discussions to continue uh, with this and get get help quickly for things which you let's say which you don't know for things which you know but you want to do it in a specific term similar coding principle what we did for a development would apply for devops engineering as well if you want to only generate let's say uh, an abstract function on top of the uh, code which has been written let's say just the lambda handler you can specifically just ask for that if you want just a script to deploy from your local you ask for that if you want a jenkins files to be generated out of it let's try that so it would be basically uh, automatically make a gener uh, same step by step uh, in a uh, jenkins file which i can then create a jenkins job uh, for the deployment with a step by step so whatever is there. if you need to change your stages to be done separately you can do that if you want to use any other things in this you would be able to do that right sir take a for example this jenkins file does this right but i want uh, this to be generated done as a lambda layer so i say ki okay uh, so it would be updating my uh, pipeline that this time prepare lambda layer is the steps instead of uh, installing dependencies as a pip install okay so this becomes a good practice in terms of how you are going to uh, deploy write your scripts get a jenkins job out of it get other part to it uh, i uh, things which i have not done in past let's say sonar cube integration right uh, for devops integration part so i can actually does that okay, okay now the same file everything is i am also doing a sonar cube integration analysis for this that way. so it does the quality gate and then my quality gate timeout if it is one hour wait for quality gates and then only the next step goes for okay. so that's how you can do prompt chaining to add more function and features to the same okay so this becomes a good practice for uh, any other scripts which you are looking for it now uh to answer this question you need to uh, uh, think about two things uh see llm is being trained any gen ai llm models or uh, personal fine tuned model they are trained on publicly available data or data whatever they had access to let's say for example google they might have already have access to all the search results which we were able to get or everyone else got uh, scrape their data and build their own uh, sets and it would done it. libraries which are popular gets automatically more bias okay second term way what you need to uh, know about is these llm model typically takes months to train and then at least four then again maybe 3 4 months to fine tune do an instruction set on top of it adding guardrails and other things right so one is the training let's say that takes 2 to 3 months and then making this tuning is another thing so every uh, model has a cut off date
so for example and you can many a time this information is publicly so for example this cloud 3.5 model has knowledge till april 2024 that means if you ask any question which has been done before uh, this date it will be able to have that in the context but let's say after april now it is august so basically this information is 4 month old so it may not be able to give you right recommendation in terms of uh, information which is recent let's say a recent update happened to a particular library uh, jdk maybe i don't know jdk 23 may, might have came right or J, uh, which has x feature if you ask anything on those feature which has not been trained in this data it will be able to give you more pathetic results not this basically any any model right second uh, so you need to think about these two part that every model has a cut off date of learning so uh, it would be able to get answer before that second information which is more and more prone right uh, more and more popular let's say python is a language which is more popular python or java you will be able to get very good better results right but any language which is new or which has a less data to get trained on or to learn from for those languages yeah uh, it would perform very badly i would say right that is why i would say get a logical reasoning first sorted out and then go for actual code uh, extraction from that logic this helps you even to first of all get a val validated logic from your side or if you have your own logic pass that in a form of simple prompts and then get your get to the answer okay so, uh, this is very critical in terms of devops engineering and that's why i typically get a feedback when i work even on my professional job as well as uh, with other startups uh, that they say ki devops mate is not giving me a better results because devops may we work with lot of additional libraries functions and tools many of those libraries are let's say uh, uh, maybe private or does not have enough data available in the public domain it's like jenkins job nobody publishes their jenkins job right it is like a very less of a data set so it gives you a high level skeleton of how to write a job but if you have to write a special this x or y it it won't do a good job but asking for a python script powershell script or a shell script it does a amazing job in those cases right same applies to uh, maybe if you are using a, a special library which is not available publicly it may not be able to get proper versioning of that right so those are the things which let's say in container you look ask for x helm chart to get integrated that helm chart is not so much known or does not have enough data uh, to uh, to get uh, basically get proper results being done from llm you will not be able to get a proper integration of helm chart for containers in kubernetes so helm chart is one of the way to deploy for containers in kubernetes okay so in those cases it may fail but in general cases it gives you very good results it will be able to, and then prompt chaining and, and giving your own context for example information which is missing you can say ki hey uh, there is a latest version available jdk 1.2.3 and this is the whole page scrape and you pass that as an information and can you take this information and then give me an update for my current current code or current scripts it will be able to do a good job in those okay so especially as a devops engineer and especially as an integration engineer uh, if uh, anyone in that that line like api integration and integration engineer those guys needs to especially think about these parts but again generate your framework it can help you generate the skeleton it can help you get the logic for all of your small bit of shell script for example it may do a bad job in terms of uh, getting this json file but it does a pretty good job in terms of how you are going to create a lambda how you are going to install this how you are going to write a publish a script function and all those things right so at least get this being generated maybe as a simple steps okay how will i publish a lambda function right or better you search this thing how will i publish a lambda function on perplexity.ai it can take the latest uh, blogs from aws and other people as a article extract the information and share the same results as a result maybe i can show you one demo of that also so for perplexity.ai is a free tool but there is a paid solution available as well but let's say if i'll ask is here a question okay okay how give me a script to publish a publish an aws lambda function with lambda layer 
in Python. And I pass it. See what it does. It tries to find out, first of all, simple search and look for sources. OK? So it found, let's say, top five sources, three this and this. And then it directly gives me the answer. That's what I need to do. And gives me step by steps, steps for doing that. OK? But it does not uh, support prompt chaining. That's what I uh, got as this thing. For example, uh, maybe I'll ask uh, write a Python function for generating. Um, maybe I copy paste for a faster results. So for example, I gave this and it generates the code, but typically it forgets that I earlier I asked for generating the uh, deployment of a Lambda layer. So it will typically gives me only those steps and okay, this time it picked it up actually. But, but many a time what I saw is that it misses uh, these steps that it does not really get the uh, context connection between the earlier search versus this. So each tool has its own pros and cons. This time it works, so it's good. But yeah, uh, so uh, so that is why you need to learn about the language. But if uh, knowledge cutoff is old, you can pass your own context. There is a concept called as a RAG. RAG is like retrieval augmented generation. If you go to prompt engineering dot guide, this is one of the way of passing information real time, which your system may not know. Like uh, RAG. Uh, da, 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 da. Where is RAG? This. This is this. So uh, if I don't know it, I can pull it from the server and then I based on that, I can build my own solution. So that's another thing which you can do. So perplexity to AI is something like that, right? If first search on the real time internet, get those articles, pass it on to an LLM model as a context and then get, tries to give me an answer. Uh, so that's another thing which it can do, okay? So that's a little bit on the DevOps part. Any questions on DevOps? OK, uh, we'll move on to uh, quickly on these two modules, and then we'll take the final questions. Uh, project level, what you can do. So module and code, which has been written once, can be analyzed. So if something all, uh, these are like simple, simple tips, uh, not need to go into details. Code written by one person, and you want to that get evaluated. Uh, you simply select a function and ask it to explain this to me. But what I saw, uh, a simple tip is, don't say he explain it to me. And then it can give you a lot of gibberish or a lot of data which you are not looking for. Ask that specific question which you have in mind. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, what how this variable goes through this particular code, right? It can give you a step by step what it is, does in this particular method, right? Or why this particular condition is being added in this particular code, right? So first, try to understand what this code does and what this particular condition would do. So that way you can, if you break your uh, analysis, it will help you get the better understanding if you're developing or debugging that, right? Second, ask about evaluate in terms of, again, simple tips like uh, uh, tell me if there is any security issue in this particular code. There, is there any code vulnerability in this particular code? If there is any performance issue in this particular code, how would this function can be done better in case your array size increases from 100 to let's say 1 lakh? Right? What are the things I need to do to make it multi-threaded? Right? That way, if you ask your question or analyze, okay, okay analyze this function for a multi-threaded. Is this function multi-threaded? Okay. Uh, how much wait time it would occur in this particular class and where exactly? Those are the function tips which you can do. That's one way of doing. It. You can write the even whole uh, rewrite the whole code in a different pattern. This is, for example, we started with a very small code. Uh, for passing the resume function, right? So I can, let's say I start afresh so that it does not have any bias and I pass this code. Whatever function it generates, I'll ask, generate it in clean code architecture pattern, okay? 
or you can say mvc architecture pattern or any other pattern here and this will help you allow and generate the same code once it will finish let it finish so that you can ask the question maybe this is enough right and i'll ask to generate it in clean code so now you tell me ke entity use case interface framework and it bifurcate all my code into different this thing and then it generate for each segment how i would be coding this particular function right so that's a good one to start with and again that's what i say uh, keep your uh, mod of uh, basically commit these things part of your code create one live bucket now you guys should do it prompt engineering maybe create a file and say ki my folder structure okay uh, if you are using uh, uh, additional uh, output not from here so if this is my case right i can pass this as a context okay, this is my library and maybe i can add here ki okay uh, it does it does this right that way one liner and this i simply pass as a context and then i say ki okay generate a code for pdf reader dot interface that way you can get a better results right earlier we had this question right if you have more uh, and even you can generate this from a simple scripts or from a github copilot okay that look for my code directory maybe I'll let me try this if it, this is available as a feature here or so it tells me what my directory could be and uh, it it does that right i at this way here it is raising okay so i think this feature may not be available in free but in paid it is available that it understand the context and then it would be doing this right so currently it is trying to just say ki, okay this is how you should design it but not generating the actual code okay but again uh, you would be able to get that or another way is you can take a screenshot of this right and uh, simply uh, get a text from it that's another method simply easy way to get this thing done okay so this is another way for uh, module by module rewriting into different design pattern code to interface this is uh, so three things uh, start using tdd test driven development wherever possible uh, use code to interface because this becomes an easier even for having a minimal context needed for understanding a particular function or a module code to interfaces instead of directly writing code in function i would be creating an interface on top and then i would implement it later so that uh, interface level i have an abstract information so that's a good practice so if you are creating a multiple versions of the same you will be able to do that clean code architecture i have shown removing any dependency from a package right you say ki okay uh, remove this library how would i rewrite for an, another library you already have a method let's say which uses one particular connection pooling mechanism you want to change it to hikari or you want to change it to any other connection pooling you say ki i am removing this this is the another library if it is relatively new library tell the function what is needed to get replaced and it would try to replace it everywhere okay that's a, another method another day which you can pass you wrote a, a particular dao layer for connecting to python you want to change it to sorry connecting to postgres sql you want to change it to mysql or maria db so simply passing that would help you so that's a good style of doing at full project level but again think it this way project level don't think about that it would be able to do a good logic work so logic work if you are think any particular function need to have a logic in that case you go by that function specifically uh, separately for re rest of it if you just need to rewrite then you can do it for a larger context okay so that's a simple tip what you can do code evaluator i've said ki if any code evaluate for a specific thing maybe do multiple prompts for the same evaluate for performance for security for readability for a x or y or up, uh, improve it for and then same thing for uh, improvement tips this, this is very good if you are a dev, if you are a fresh engineer or uh, currently in college right so objective is that if you are in college and you want to learn about how to write a better code 
I would recommend first you write whatever bad pathetic good code which you can write from your side and pass it to LLM and say evaluate it this code don't tell me the improvement just tell me the improvement what I should do and what are the library I should scout for right and uh, okay one more thing which I mentioned to forget it forgot to mention is this that you can play a role play with this right maybe this one example what we can take here is okay, okay uh, let's say I say ki, I am a fresh engineer learning to code. Don't tell me exact code, but tell me what library I need to move to complete below example where example is sorry was that and i pass this as a prompt so it tells me what i need to libraries it, need, it is telling me what is like a regular expression I need to do, what are the other natural language processing tasks I need to do. And then from this you got the tips, and then you can go to the internet, search about these libraries and inter integrate it. And you say, okay, this is the code what I written using PyBDF2. Explain it and let me know what are the areas to improve by line by line. Right? You go with those tips. Then it will be able to do it. This way helps you still retain your fundamental knowledge which is very critical. Okay, because see, company is not hiring you to do a prompt engineering in uh, in the uh, in the uh, organization. They are hiring you to so that you can lead the uh, 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 basically lead these LLM model. You think about you have an army of small developers with you. So uh, now uh, maybe just one uh, one part is people uh, we typically think that when we say fresher. Pressure, may, pressure does not mean that company is expecting you to, a company is okay to have your zero years of experience, but company don't want you to have a zero on skills, right? So there are three things, skills, knowledge, and experience, right? Fresher means you can have a zero years of experience, but companies are still asking you to have this uh, skills and knowledge. Knowledge is, let's say, Python, uh, fundamental theory, which you are reading in the college, and skills is your applic applied logic of that, able to convert your fundamental theory, theory knowledge into a practical application. That is why do more and more experience in terms of writing a small code, maybe using prompt engineering, getting samples of X or Y, and then tries to do it. Don't uh, basically just stay on key. Okay, this is, a, uh, this is one thing which I got in my college, uh, college as an assignment. I'll pass it on to prompt engineer uh, to any chat GPT, get my code and submit it. Teacher ko bhi nahi pata, you also don't know and then eventually you got a good good marks but you would really struggle in terms of when you are applying for college applying for actual work so uh, start having that hustle that uh, uh, these things are actually creating this is what i was saying earlier as well that for uh, this is actually creating a new hindrance for developers right a barrier of entry for a fresher is more high earlier if you just need to know java you will get uh, into the company now you need to know Java uh, database and three things calling yourself as a full stack fresher engineer, you will get hired. Now the expectation is that you should be full stack engineer plus plus you should be able to do all the work writing from setting up your laptop to getting the code, understanding different part and able to done everything from your end. That is why having the fundamental knowledge and able to convert your knowledge and skills is something is needed. And yes, experience can't be taken away. Right? So what, wherever you have experience of doing things uh, as an ex expertise, that's something uh, Gen AI can't simply take you up. So that's where is still experience lies, which can, which is your intuition, which you call or whatever. Let's say you directly go, you simply see a bug in the UI and you directly jump onto a code and say, okay, this could be the area where it needs to fix it. But how to fix it up quickly, that's something Gen AI can help you, okay? So that's on the project level, code evaluator, mentors. Now, uh, this is as a tech lead if you are there, right? 
there are concepts let's say as a tech lead or as a tech architect you are also don't aware of or you want to do a quick evaluation okay or as a fresher also if you don't have a mentor you can use this uh, special tips so that it's kind of an imaginary mentor for you you wrote a program and ask you okay, what's the time complexity of this or what's the space complexity of it or how to calculate the space complexity for this particular project okay again uh, maybe i'll start fresh uh, on a simple program which we wrote and then i'll ask you what's the time complexity of this What is time complexity of buff Python code? See, this is the thought, uh, chain of thought. Simple, adding this thing, right? Will improve a lot in terms of results. This is chain of thought where you are asking chat GPT to explain you their thought. Reverse is where you have a thought and you pass it. Both comes under the chain of thought prompt engineer. So it tells me process, time, complexity, and kya hai, blah, 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 and everything. And then it uh, breaking down for me. Right? So that way it would be telling you for each. Time complexity for mobile function is OS 2T. T is the length of the text. This is also OS 2T. This is also the length of the T. And that way, right? For everything else, it is also telling me. And then overall complexity, it will combining that one plus OT, and uh, how many number of time we are doing it. So maybe I can take an example. Take an example where a resume length is of 500 character. So it will then put those numbers and also tell me that what would be my overall number. So that way you can simply understand that how you can do it, right? That's one part. A skeleton of code, right? Uh, this I think we saw multiple times, so I'm not going to repeat it again. You give a full task and say, what should be my directory structure? Start with that, right? And then uh, go, how where, where shall, I, shall I create which file? Which, what are the function I should create in each file? And then you go for how should I write a business logic about each file? Till that you can get an help from the mentor. And then if you are a fresher, I would suggest you write your own code. If you are an experienced, then you take help from Gen AI to even write that code, right? And then you merge it together. So you start always from the top, generate it, and then go step by steps. And that's one thing I, what I wanted to show you through this particular framework. Define your framework, define all the classes and functional definition, flow diagram for each class, that how the multiple classes will interact with each other. And flow diagram of internal function, each, each function, what would be the algorithms for that? Then do the codification. Then if you're writing parallel unit test case for it, do that. Uh, uh, additionally, in the coding part, add constraint, exception, and ending logic. Iterate it for each of the function for each class. And that's what you do it overall. Then additionally, you write your test cases, your deployment script. And once it deploys to production, you do your exception and understanding uh, you get a log error or do an analysis you pasted that inside your code it would be able to do that okay you pass this particular whole class or a function is giving me this particular exception tell me what i could do that okay that's at the code mentor level uh so llms so that was it uh, llms are good at uh, own which is it got trained i think I, we talked about this example on the internet latest feature things which are not properly available on the internet, you will not be able to give you better results. This is it. Any questions, I would be available for next 15 minutes, uh, if it is there. Uh, otherwise, we are concluded. Any questions from anyone? Can you keep the roadmap to start with this particular generative AI, if I want to start with? Hmm. So I come again, I think your voice was not clear for the first part of can you give us a roadmap to start with generative AI? Roadmap in terms of using as a developer? Learning. 
learning from the beginning. Learning as a developer to adopt yeah. Gen AI, right? Correct. Okay. So uh, I think uh, I would suggest to start using maybe on the public domain first to understand how you can do it. Uh, learn about prompt engineering. This is very critical because I won't say it just for developers, but for everyone, we should be knowing this. It's like it's a new race uh, which is going to be there. Uh, race in terms of community, you can say, uh, automated community. So it's like a new language which all of us need to learn about to get the best out of this. Even in the media, this is being used at every other location. Right? So, the, so I would suggest the first path for you would be uh, learning about prompt engineering, learning about LLM settings and configurations, which you can do from the earlier lecture as well as here. So this is number one thing. Second uh, is the how you would be using this in part of your code. Right? That's the second thing. Third is uh, there are specialized LLM model for specialized languages as well. Right? That's the third thing which people are doing. Some of the large organization, they are training their own private data sets. So for example, if your code base is quite huge or if your company operates across multiple projects and maybe the code base itself is, let's say if your GitLab is of 300, 400 GB or a TB, you can pick one of the, uh, let's say, instruct model, fine tune it for your with your own data set and deploy it over uh, cloud or deploy it on-prem. Yeah. And so that your developers can simply integrate it like Olama and which can be integrated directly in the browser itself or in the in your code integration itself. So that that's the third thing which comes to it. But I think it all depends on just the first three things. Mm -hmm. Learn about the foundation model. Learn about that there are multiple exist number one, right? Don't believe that only ChatGPT is there or only Claude is there. There are multiple and this is a uh, ongoing race which is happening. So see what is the latest, learn from it, develop your own skill sets onto the new languages. Prompt engineering is very crucial here. So learn about the different tips here, but these tips are general. You need to learn about how to use these things in terms of, uh, 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 you need to use these tips in terms of coding. So that's something which you need to do, right? So that's the third thing. Fourth is uh, then utilize this in generating the whole code from this, right? But it's step by step breakdown and all something which you can do. This is something for using as a developer. If you are generating, uh, if you want to generate your own module with the Gen AI, if you want to train, fine tune your own models and you want to work on this, there's a concept of multi-agent, small language model, fine tuned model are coming where you can think of this key. There are seven different model being trained for seven different separate tasks. One is good for Java development, uh, module by module, function by function. One, one module is very good in terms of generating the uh, algorithms, right? And one module is good in terms of uh, breaking down code for Java structure classes and function, right? Then one is to very good in to fine tune for unit test cases. One is fine tuned to write integration test case. Now I can create each of these small LLM model as an agent. Agent are like mini LLM model. And then you write one big uh, LLM model on top with a logic basically code logic, which it does kind of this flow. Okay, whenever I give a project, it breaks it down, take human in loop always, okay, kon -kon si classes chahiye, kya -kya functions chahiye, uh, tune the tweak and write a code. If uh, people are building these kind of model and then they are saying that this is the Gen AI as a developer, you might have heard of uh, certain startups are doing that kind of a work. So that's the another steps where company is in investing a lot in the multi-agent integration automatically, not only for coding, but any other use cases as well. If you're building a large project, uh, which is asking a lot of information from customer from X or Y things and this, people are simply integrating it now with a chat based use case and getting information and why it's like talking it in a human fashion and gets the information and doing things in backend automatically. Integration engineering is getting hit, it will get hit by a lot, right? Because uh, that's something which requires very much of a knowledge of which API does what and converting one format to other. Now LLM does most of that job for you, right? So you need to think about how you can actually optimize your own work or building your knowledge to the next level. So every job is being hit at one place or the other, but you need to improvise on your human skills, which is like 
able for your intuition learning new things uh, understanding knowledge from one and able to apply it somewhere else right so that again i'll pass again the same thing uh, maybe the same youtube link which i passed earlier that learn about bloom taxonomy uh, this will give you a thought process of what what you need to do in terms of uh, basically learning this thing and able to apply it somewhere else Uh, I just have one question. Hmm. Yeah, so we have currently GitLab, which is for uh, build pipeline, and okay. it has inbuilt uh, Sonar uh, step, which does course plan and it gives the code depth, and it has several uh, recommendation to improve the current code. So we have code in old Struts framework, and the latest Spring Boot. So we have a couple of hundreds of recommendations to fix. Now, to so Jenya, can I have some plugin which can allow us to open the report which says specific file path like uh, dot java file name, and then check the recommendation then do the fix and then okay. commit the code to any such functionality which we can build uh, so for any recommendation are, for the uh, good point actually so there are like market tool available for that it's like see there are these mod uh, these llm model are not for developers right this is for everyone cloud.ai chat gpt.ai so that's why they have a simple text based interface which returns text internally but uh, there are specialized software just for coding right like for example last year i'll talk about our own amazon may they have generated a code which helps you move from let's say a legacy application is there let's say in jdk 1.4 or jdk 1.5 or older version and you want to migrate that to a latest version it does all things automatically it identify what are the libraries which are going getting deprecated it identifies which needs to get updated to and if there is an xml file in older version automatically rewrite that so whole code which let's say take a month to complete it does within one or two hours so uh, they migrated i think with a team of three people i think more than 300 project within 15 days so that's the power so if you are if you are a startup an entrepreneur having any such ideas you can build on top of it so even sonar cube results or static code analysis so there are a lot of tools which gives you static code analysis automatically as soon as you commit into the code can i build a model which can take one example what's my one bug check it fix it and then commit that bug uh, commit that back as a uh, let's say simple so where human can simply co compare this two code and if he sees okay he will simply run it where, where automatically unit test cases are being run and uh, then it's a done job so that's another thing which you can basically think of so uh, yes uh, but if you search for special things there are available the, this kind of a thing so uh, gitlab by default gives you static code analysis and dynamic code in analysis on uh, based on rules based on regular expression and so does uh, sonar cube but now with jni you can integrate that maybe even gitlab and sonar cube both might be working on i don't know but there could be other tools as well which you can integrate so but yeah hope that answered the question okay yeah. thank you any other question okay uh, if no more questions then i think uh, we can wind up uh, thank you jazakallah khair for all of you for your time Thank you very much. And if you want to share on this platform, you can reach out to us. Okay.